Hi, I'm Ben Neen, and I'm the Senior Manager for Publisher Monetization. Back in November, AppNexus held its first ever publisher forum, where we brought together over 100 publisher ad ops professionals to talk about key topics influencing our industry, including header bidding. During the header bidding panel, one theme that merged quickly among the three panelists from the Weather Company, A+, and Ad Monsters was how easy it had been, or hadn't been, to implement header bidding across their organizations. But despite the aches and pains of adopting it into their respective corporate strategies, all panelists agreed that header bidding was well worth it. It seemed to be an undeniable revenue driver. In order to get the most out of your header bidding setup and achieve better monetization, there are a few things that you should focus on as a publisher. Step one, determine who you want to work with and pick a wrapper solution. The big benefit here is that you can work with a lot of partners, which ultimately has a positive effect on publisher monetization. At AppNexus, we suggest using prebid.js as your wrapper, which is a free, open source solution for header bidding. Other options include pubfood.js, header tag, and smart wrapper, just to name a few. Step two, determine what timeout rate you're willing to accept, as this will have an impact on response rate and the number of impressions you can fill through header bidding. The reality is that different bidders can have vastly different rates of response latency. The industry benchmark is 2,000 milliseconds, and you can check out latency analysis resources on prebid.org to see the different timetables. At AppNexus, we think a good range for the United States and Europe on a desktop experience is 400 to 800 milliseconds. A good range for mobile is a bit longer, 800 to 1,200 milliseconds. Step three. Understand the body of work around line item creation that may be required. Ultimately, the number of line items you have to create is dependent on how granular you want to go with your pricing strategy. For reference, a dime is a nice middle ground. That will give you a lot of the benefits of granular yield optimization, but at one-tenth the scale for penny buckets. You may want to get more granular at the lower end of your bid landscape, where there are more bidders competing and a greater likelihood for exchanges to be less than a dime apart in value. Bottom line here is get started quickly and leverage dime buckets. Step four, this particular step has to do with line item values and their targeting. But it's important because it's what enables header bidding to compete on price and optimize your revenue between direct and indirect channels on an impression by impression basis. So it's a required step in a correct implementation and getting the enhanced yield benefits of header bidding. We know that publishers work with a variety of ad serving partners, but for those on DFP, don't forget that enhanced dynamic allocation needs to be on and you need to set up the line items as price priority. Additionally, you need to align the value CPM for the line item to the key value for the bid you are targeting on that line item. So if you're using bid equals two, then you should set the value CPM to $2. Different partners use different key values, so make sure you pay attention to your specific partner's documentation and apply the same concept if you're working on a different ad server. And lastly, step five, you need to measure performance and optimize. Here are the metrics we suggest you look at. Response rate, how often does your partner respond, including with a zero or no bid? This is measured by responses divided by capacity and helps you understand how to optimize your partner's timeout setting. Try to answer the question, how long do I have to give a partner to get a response 70 or 80% of the time. Bid rate. Okay, now of the responses, how often is that response a real bid? That is a value greater than zero. This metric helps you understand how much demand your partner is really bringing to the table. If a partner has a low bid rate, it might not be worth keeping in your header. Win rate. So by this point, you understand if exchanges have enough time to respond and how often they actually bid. But beyond that, are they actually bidding enough to win impressions or not? If not, why are you continuing to work with them? To measure this, you would look at the number of filled impressions from each exchange. Header bidding is taking the industry by storm, and it's something that AppNexus clients are already benefiting from. To learn more, check out our Livingly case study to hear how they had 10% incremental revenue growth in just two months by implementing AppNexus's header bidding solution.